Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about DaVinci Resolve and the three reasons why I really, just really think you should use it to color grade. Now look, I know if you use Premiere, if you use Final Cut, you've been told countless times to color grade in DaVinci Resolve. Whether it's a random dude on the internet like me, or your friend who is an editor who has just fully embraced DaVinci Resolve, someone's been like, hey, you know, DaVinci Resolve is a pro coloring platform. People grade movies and TV shows with DaVinci Resolve. You should use it. It's way better than Premiere or Final Cut. And you know what? I got one thing to say about those people. They're freaking right. They are absolutely correct. I started using it to color a lot of the projects we do at work. And let me tell you, it's so just fun to use. So today I want to give you three reasons why I think coloring in DaVinci is more enjoyable and just better overall. Let's get into it. Also, if you like this video, if you learned something, if you enjoy it, hit like down below, helps me out, helps grow the channel. Y'all are awesome. Let's talk about color grading. Okay, so number one, and this is probably my biggest gripe with Lumetri Color and Premiere Pro, we're talking the user interface. And y'all, I'm talking about how small the color grading tools are in Premiere. They're tiny, they're very small, and I'm already doing most of my work on a laptop, and the worst offenders of this are the curves, which is really bad because I feel like that's where most like in-depth color grading takes place, <laughs> HSL curves. But the worst offender of the worst offenders is the tone curve, which is arguably the most powerful color grading tool in the software and it's this tiny little square box it's super small and a lot of times when you're working on a tone curve you need to make pretty intricate moves because when you move one part of it the other part of it flies somewhere else but this square is so dang small that you can't really tell what's happening okay obviously i'm being a little over dramatic and i hear you i hear you saying dustin you know you can customize the layout in premiere you could just drag the window out. Let's test that theory. So we're gonna drag the window out and there's two problems here. One, now my video is really small. I could just drag my scopes over here to be really tiny so I could see my whole video, but then I can't see my scopes. But I could move my scopes down here and then drag them out, but then I can't see my timeline and switch between adjustment layers and clips. Now I know there is probably actually a good setup if I actually spent the time building it out and honestly i might do that but that doesn't forgive issue number two that issue being when i drag out the color panel the hsl curves they get pretty close to the curves in resolve but looking back at the tiny tone curve square it's still really small like for some reason it doesn't grow at the same magnitude why is this curve not a giant rectangle i don't understand but let me flip over to resolve and show you why i like theirs better so we open it up look at this massive tone curve one it's pretty big and two Two, it's in a rectangle shape which this is kind of nitpicky but it's also really nice because the tone curve kind of represents the video itself and the video is a rectangle so I don't know that helps my brain <laughs> giant tone curve click over giant HSL curves and this whole UI thing comes down to the fact that DaVinci Resolve was built to be a color grading platform if their color grading UI was bad <laughs> that would just be very <laughs> That would be very sad. So I understand Lumetri not being the greatest design color panel, but it does kind of always blow my mind that Adobe won't put more time into making a pro level color grading platform. And I know I got kind of heated over that, but the reason I get passionate about it is after using DaVinci's color interface, you can just tell that it was designed to make your brain flow with color grading. It feels so good. When I'm coloring there, I'm like, ah, this is my happy coloring place. It's just magical. Okay, moving on from that, the next two focus much more on the abilities of the program that Premiere does not have or isn't that great at. And number two, we're talking about qualifiers, windows, and the tracking features in this free software. I never did any of this before I used DaVinci. So if you've never used like qualifiers or windows or tracking, I'm just gonna run through it real quick. One thing that I love to do is take a human face and put just a little bit of pop on it. So let's do that right here in this frame. So I'm gonna take my qualifier, which allows me to select super specific parts of the image, get my skin tones, but as you can see, a lot of the stuff in this image, especially back here, is the same color as my skin tone. And all I wanna affect is my face. So I'm gonna grab a window, put it around my face, feather it out, but my face is moving. And I don't want that window to stay there. Oh, watch this tracking, watch this tracking. Click, tracks the whole image. And now I'll throw the midtones up, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of saturation on my face, 
And now I have essentially selected a very specific part of my image and it only took me like maybe 30 seconds. So Premiere Pro actually does have these tools, but I just find that one, again, they're laid out a lot better in DaVinci and they also work much better in DaVinci, specifically the tracking. So number three, last but definitely not least, are the exposure controls. So in Premiere, the go-to way to change your exposure is to open up the basic tab, use your shadows, your highlights, your whites, and your blacks to dial in the exposure of your image. And this isn't really a problem with Premiere, but when I got into DaVinci and started using their main way of adjusting exposure, I liked it a lot better. And that way is using the lift, gamma, and gain wheels, the primary use wheels. And when I first saw this, I was like, what the actual heck? are lift, gamma, and gain. I don't know what that is. It sounds like too much. That's supposed to be shadows, midtones, and highlights. That's supposed to be something to do with lights or exposure. But then I started using it and it just feels so nice. And it feels like such a natural way to adjust the exposure of your image. So I'm gonna explain it super quick, but I'm not gonna get real scientific, real in-depth. If you want a really good in-depth explanation of it, click up here, watch Dunna Did It's video going over the lift, gamma, and gain wheels. But I'm gonna do my best and give you what you need to know to understand it and use it. So lift, gamma, and gain essentially stand for shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if I move up the lift and then we look at the image and the scopes, you can see my blacks come up. If I move the gain up and down, you can see the same thing for my highlights, my whites, and then the same for the midtones when I mess with gamma. Where the magic comes in is how it's actually affecting your image. So if we look at the screen right here, I have this grayscale image, this gradient from black to white and a lot of grays in between. And then we have our waveform up. And as you can see, the waveform, it looks very much like our tone curve. Watch what happens to the waveform when I mess with the lift. It pulls that black point up but it's also affecting the rest of the image. So yes, it's affecting the shadows, it's affecting the blacks, but it's making sure that the midtones kind of come with it and making sure that the gain kind of comes with it so you get a nice roll of exposure adjustment. That is the way that it makes sense in my head. And to show you kind of the opposite of that, let me click over to the shadows wheel. When I mess with the shadows wheel, there's very much a cutoff point for what shadows can affect. It stops literally right here and it only affects that. And if you look at the image, it looks really unnatural. I'm not saying you should never use these, but I am saying you shouldn't use them as your main exposure adjustments. So let's look at the exposure controls in Premiere and see the differences. So again, we have our grayscale and we'll look a lot at our waveform. So when I mess with the exposure tab, it's looking pretty good. It's affecting kind of the whole tone curve, the whole image in a pretty natural way. So let's look at whites. Whites does a very similar thing, but I feel like it's limited a lot in how far you can actually push it either way. But then we get to blacks, shadows, and highlights. So the weirdest thing to me is if whites affects the tone curve like this, then I would assume the black slider does the same thing just on the bottom of the image, but no, it's very similar to the shadows wheel in DaVinci, where it has a super hard cutoff point and only affects the blacks underneath that cutoff point, nothing else in the image. And then we can look at shadows and highlights, which are similar to the gamma wheel, but they still, again, have these weird arches, these weird, they're not hard cutoff points, but they are weird curves and it just doesn't feel natural on the image. And so let me try to wrap that up nicely so I'm not just rambling. Lift, gamma, and gain affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights of your image, but they do it in a way that feels very natural and that looks very natural. And we can clearly see this in the waveform of our image. Whereas the exposure tools in the basic tab of Premiere are not bad by any means, and I use them all the time, and they do a fine job, I really do think so. But they do really affect the curve of your image in just very odd ways. Again, if you wanna see the in-depth explanation, go check out Dunna's video. I mean, he goes all in, it's good, and I think it's a good time watching, especially if you are a nerd like me. But hey y'all, that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like down below. It helps grow the channel, it helps new people see the vids. I'm having a good time. I appreciate you watching. Like, genuinely, thank you. You. Yeah, you. If you want to check out last week's video, you can look at it right here. If you want to check out another video that's on the screen, you can look at it right here. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing because apparently 94% of you aren't subscribed. Hmm. All right, y'all. That's all I have. Have a good day. Have a good night. I'll see you next week.